A Tesla turbine is a type of turbine invented by Nikola Tesla in the early 20th century. And what it is is a series of flat disks aligned on a shaft that work by effect of the boundary layer at, or a fluid moving across the flat disk. Here is an example of the turbine. As you can see, we have a series of flat disks and there's a very thin disc gap between them. Now there's a thin disc gap because we want to maximize the boundary layer and minimize the fluid flow around the boundary layer. Now in a traditional turbine, if you're looking at it from the front, we have a series of blades, like so. Or if you're looking at it from the side, we have a series of blades mounted along the shaft. Now what happens in a traditional turbine is that fluid flows across <laughs> the blades like this, causing them to rotate around like so. Or in a uh, steam turbine, which you find in power plants, you have an inlet right here that fires a stream of steam or water or whatever working fluid you're using against the blades, causing a torque around the, this point, causing them to rotate. Okay. Tesla, I'm sorry, go ahead. Tesla's turbine instead uses a series of flat disks and with slots or holes in the center. And you have an inlet that fires a fluid, a working fluid towards the edge of the disc and what happens is is that as the fluid moves across the discs, disc due to the boundary layer effect it clings to the disc and causes the disc to rotate it transfers the kinetic energy that the fluid has to the disc causing it to rotate basically a torque like that now as the disc rotates faster and faster the air starts to spiral around the disc towards the center. And once you get to a point where the angular velocity of the disks are is very great, then you have a tight spiral that just goes straight to the center and that is where you experience high efficiencies in the Tesla turbine. Well, in most traditional turbines there are problems that they have in the fact that they can only be run one way. Basically, you cannot reverse the direction of a traditional turbine. Also, if you look at a traditional turbine, you have a series of machine blades, and generally when something breaks on the turbine, the entire thing has to be taken off. You have to machine a blade or part of a blade back onto there, which is very costly and time consuming. Now in Tesla's turbine, what you have are a series of flat disks. Disks are much more easier to produce and all you have is a slot or a series of holes in the center. Now this is a lot more simpler design. That's why it is used a lot by amateur scientists wanting to experiment with this turbine. Now most efficiencies of heat engines for instance, internal combustion engines peaks at around 25% theoretically. Diesel engines, you get a little bit better, 35 to 40%. Most modern turbines have a theoretical efficiencies of above 90%. Now, when Tesla originally designed his turbine, what you had was he theoretically predicted that you could have efficiencies of 97%. In the 1950s, Dr. Warren Rice, a uh, professor at, in the mechanical engineering department of Arizona State University, conducted his own tests with Tesla turbines. His turbines experienced about 40% efficiency, but he documented that theoretically, if you have complete laminar flows, you can achieve 95% efficiency with these type of heat engines. Well, the first concept I want to talk about is the laminar flow over the disk, and that's dictated by the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number simply says whether you have a turbulent flow or a laminar flow. A Reynolds number 
of less than 2,000 is generally considered a laminar flow. Now, the formula for rotating disks in the, uh, separated by a thin gap for the Reynolds number with is given by this formula here. So the Reynolds number is equal to 4 thirds C B sub A big M. Where V sub A is a relative flow velocity, C is the flow density, and big M is the dynamic coefficient of the viscosity. Now we also have the boundary layer given by small delta. Now there's two boundary layer equations, one of which I'll discuss because that is what is most important. That is the laminar boundary layer. The turbulent boundary layer causes a lot of problems and therefore I won't discuss it since that's not essential to the turbine. But the laminar boundary layer, the symbolized by little delta, is equal to 5 times the square root of nu times 1 over u, where nu is the kinematic viscosity of the working fluid, and u is the inlet flow velocity of the inlet that you're using to power the turbine. The last formula I want to talk about, and is, is very important as well, is the disk spacing between the disks. If you have two disks, what you want to do is align them so that you get the most out of the disk gap and get the best boundary layer between them. That, given uh, in a paper by Glenn A. Barless, says that the disk gap spacing is equal to pi times nu, which is the kinematic viscosity of the working fluid, divided by the angular velocity of the turbine. Now, as you can see, depending on what the turbine speed is, will dictate what the ideal disk gap is. Well, the unique thing about a Tesla turbine is that not only it can be used as a turbine, but it can also be used reversibly as a pump. So anywhere that you can use a turbine, whether in electricity generation, in automotive or transportation technology, or any place that requires uh, movement, you can use a turbine. Likewise, if you reverse a Tesla turbine, meaning that instead of having a fluid flow against the disks, like so, instead if you cause the disks to rotate by some force, either a motor or hand crank mechanical, it will instead draw fluid uh, axially and expel it tangentially in that direction. And the advantage to this is that in traditional pumps that are still uh, kind of bladed uh, pumps, now the Tesla turbine since it uses a series of flat discs, you can have particulates in the matter. So you don't need to have you don't need to break whatever fluid down if you're using it as a pump into very, very, very minute particles. You can have larger particulates in there. Likewise, as a turbine, in traditional turbines, you need to use superheated steam. With a uh, Tesla turbine, you don't need to use superheated steam as the droplets that are in saturated steam won't imping and destroy the blades. Well, first and foremost, we want the turbine to be lightweight, but we also want it to be very smooth. The smoother, the uh, better the boundary layer, and the less chance we have of developing a turbulent boundary layer. So, what I would recommend is any type of metal or ceramic, if possible, but polished to where it is incredibly smooth. The smooth, the smoothest possible, the smoother the better. Also, the edge of the turbine, if you're using disks, generally the edge of the turbine, uh, or disks, look like this. If you were to change that so that the edges of the turbine look more aerodynamic, that would also add to a laminar flow and eliminate any turbulence caused by just having a, fat, a flat face. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Dr. V. No.
what I want to do, if you can, can we do one through three one more time?